This is uh, Leon Ferranti here from uh, Art in Adelaide speaking with Max Levy, a member of the Lab Rats, who has also been hosting a wonderful spoken word event called Folk and Words. Hi Max, good to see you at your home in Adelaide today. I'd like to start by um, asking when and where did you become fascinated with words and decide to harness their power to share with others? Did it begin as a young child and did you develop further by doing courses? Yeah, I've um, always been a pretty immense reader, always been reading and having things read to me as well as a child as well. I remember my mum reading me The Hobbit when I was like four or five years old and that was like my entry into the whole fantasy genre and, and Tolkien. Always loved reading at school and didn't really start writing uh, properly, I guess, until after school. I did some literature and short story and creative writing classes at university and really enjoyed them. Short stories was one of my first entries into fiction writing and trying to write something that got a story and a point across, but keeping it succinct as well was yeah. kind of the most difficult task. Poetry is more of a recent thing, really, like only like the last couple of years, just something that I've uh, really, really enjoyed experimenting with. So as a young child, did you sort of say to yourself, oh, well, I need to write, or did somebody say, you need to write? I enjoyed English at school, but poetry for example, wasn't actually something that I enjoyed a lot at school, whether it was just the wrong uh, context or poetry that I didn't necessarily enjoy reading at the time, didn't connect with me. The kind of desire to write is has been far more recent and apparent. I've always written. I remember writing, trying to start novels on the Notes app on my phone years ago, but they'd always just be kind of scrapped to the side. You have a desire to write for yourself or because you want to expressed to other people. Yeah, definitely definitely a combination of those two elements. Like I love expressing my words to other people, whether it be reading poetry or, or sending something I've written to a friend or just showing them or just reading something to friends. But um also definitely it's a personal ambition. If I can make some sort of career or impact out of my writing, then that's really the most important thing that I can hope to achieve. So how do ideas for your work come to you and do you have any methods that you employ for its construction? Yeah, it's often quite sporadic. I can be reading something, a specific book or a collection of poetry and be very inspired to write based off of what I've just read and what I've experienced. Or I can just going about my daily business and have an idea pop into my head, which is often the kind of driving cause of a poem that I might write. I might, yeah, but like I say, it's, it's sporadic. I might write like five or six poems in a day and then go a couple of weeks without writing them. The kind of ebbs and flows of creativity are definitely quite inconsistent. I like to sit in my room and get some nice like orange ambient lighting on and just try and write some stuff. Okay. It, you can't force it as well. If the ideas aren't flowing, then it's not going to be authentic if you're just trying to force words onto a page. What are your influences? Do you have any people, books or other things that inspire you and form the foundation for your ideas? I'm very fascinated by the, the beat generation of like the 1950s. Okay. Uh, writers like Jack Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg and William Burroughs. Um, they're like spontaneous prose, um, sporadic, wild writing styles that are very, um, like don't follow a, a, a general structure of writing. Yeah, Jack Kerouac would just kind of write an entire novel in a night and then kind of just wait until late, uh, later to edit it. And that's a style I've been trying to use. I'm a habitual self-editor um, and I've been trying to just focus on getting words onto the page rather than focus on the editing and, and save that for later. I also love the writing of some of my favourite musicians like Jim Morrison, the kind of mystic, mythical style that he used in songs like um, Writers on the Storm and the End and then some of the classic folk singers like Bob Dylan and Joni Mitchell as well. And what made you choose poetry and spoken words to be your form of expression and communication? And do you have other passions such as music, for example? Yeah, I like writing. I like writing folk songs. Being a big Bob Dylan fan and uh, has definitely inspired a lot of like folk music, just like stripped back uh, guitar and simple melodies and vocals, but 
Poetry is the main medium of expression at the moment. I find that it's a, a style that I really like utilizing and presenting to people. And I also love the expression of poetry in a performance setting. It's very respectful and intimate. You don't see people like chatting on their phones while watching a poet. It's very personal and vulnerable and you have to have a lot of courage to step on a stage and present poetry, especially in an art form that's so personal like poetry to other people. And it's interesting because having experienced it from the other side, I like the events that you guys have been hosting because the people that are there are there because they want to be there. And as you say, they're not sitting there doing something else, they're intent. They're appreciative and they don't seem to be really very judgmental, they just yeah. accept you know, what comes out, so that's really good. Tell me about the creation of Folk and Words uh, event and how you seem to be able, it impresses me, to just whip up excitement over the spoken word and music expression and you just get people to come. Folk and Words came about because I wanted um, a platform to not only present my own art but um, to provide that environment that is both inviting and intimate and respectful, non-judgmental, for other people to come up and express their work, whether it be the poetry or the folk music. Those are two of my favourite art forms, so I wanted to combine them definitely and have music to break up the poetry as well and just provide a different element of art. I just find it really an energetic, exciting thing that you guys are doing, and it's not just you, there's other people yeah. doing it as well, who go, you know what, we're going to do this thing, we'll just set it all up, the ticket's on Eventbrite or whatever, bang, 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 and it's done. And I yeah. think, is there a lot of background work? I mean, do you find it hard? Or? Yeah, there's a lot of background work. We also live in a time where it's very accessible and, and kind of a lot simpler to do things like this. Everything can be run through through social media. Most of the promotion for Folk and Words has just been on Instagram and Facebook. I've thought about printing out posters and putting them around town and for both this event and the last one, I've just left that too late and forgotten to do it. And that would have obviously been a way to really promote things in times when we didn't have social media, but now I can just post an Instagram story every few days or post an, an, an artist bio. I think about this quite a bit. Something's obviously happening in Adelaide. Do you think that like maybe we're on the brink of some expression revolution or perhaps a new renaissance? Not just with spoken word, but with all, you know, digital art and all the other stuff that's going on. Yeah, very fortunate to be in the Adelaide art scene. It is really exploding at the moment with so many talented artists. Some of the, like, finest art uh, installations, like some live music that I've seen has all been in Adelaide. I'm just so impressed and I feel quite honoured to be a part of it myself. I think a lot of the recent excitement probably comes from the thrill of being liberated from COVID and not having to be inside anymore. There's probably, since COVID, been so many bands popping up that weren't able to play or practice or get together to play live shows during the lockdown. So now there's this explosion of talent and art in the scene and yet there's just so many cool artists to see around Adelaide it is really cool. I'm not sure if I describe it as like a revolution. I just think people are really getting together and we just happen to have like a really exciting scene here at home. I think Adelaide also benefits from its kind of limited size because we don't have enormous amount of live venues or a big population. Everyone that's in the art scene kind of knows of or is friends with everyone else that's in the art scene and everyone's kind of interconnected in what they're doing and, and how they're promoting things and you can go out and see like three different live music gigs on a single night and probably run into all your friends there. Could you discuss the importance of poetry as an expression, I guess historically, if you want to go backwards, and also today? Poetry is incredibly important historically. It's the one of the most important foundations of music and the telling of history as well. You go back to the ancient Greeks, you have Homer who wrote the Odyssey and the Iliad, and those are just enormous poems that have a lot of historical context and, and uh, smaller ones like uh, Jason and the Argonauts, like these are great historical tellings or a lot of mythology has been told through poems like the uh, Poetic Edda by Snorri Stolson which tells of the Viking lore and the, and the Norse gods as well and that was originally written as just a, a collection of long poems that's since been turned into prose and today I think poetry has an important place in the art scene because you can go to so much live music there's a lot less poetry there's plenty of events around but it all seems a little bit scattered and not entirely consistent and frequent and I think I wanted to create folk and words to just provide 
another platform for people to be able to express poetry because I think it's a form of art that's been sidelined a little bit as kind of all art has been sidelined a little bit but I still see a lot of attention and a lot of desire to be to participate in that around town. And so I think it's really necessary but it, it has been kind of left behind you know sort of music and rock music and all the other genres have gone up but poetry is always kind of sitting on the bottom so now yeah. It's been given more of a voice, I think that's, that's great. What have you got lined up for the future? And please tell us about the next instalment of Folk and Words. The next Folk and Words, really excited for it. Got another really, really fantastic collection of local poets who also happen to be friends of mine, which is really nice. The singers on the night are also really fantastic. Steffi, uh, Rory and, and Cordonegra are really, really exciting musicians that just present beautiful music that I'm just really excited to see again. And then I'd like love to get another Folk and Words event going in April sometime and then just kind of keep them going consistently every two or three months with plenty of variety, new artists, and then bring back some old ones eventually. And yeah, just see how much experimentation I can do with it. I'd love to get into some sort of collaboration with um, painters as well and okay. combine yeah poetry and painting, do some sort of art installation or an exhibition at a small studio and I've spoken to a couple painters about writing five poems based off of their paintings and them doing a couple paintings based off of poems I've written. So that's a space I'm really excited to get into. And would that involve also say live art, you know just doing some art or installation? Yeah I've thought about live like painting as well. I think a more like I don't know out there idea would be to have live poetry reading simultaneous with a live painting I think I'd be really fascinated to watch a painter mm. kind of react to what poets or poet is talking about and turn that into a piece of art based off of what they've heard and vice versa yeah so the next this coming spoke uh, folk and words is uh, on this Wednesday on yeah, the 17th this at one's 7 p.m. about 7 p.m. at uh, the Grace Emily yes, Hotel I look forward to going to that yeah and I'd like to Thank you for sharing your thoughts and ideas and uh, we'll look forward to more in the future. Yeah, you. yeah, brilliant. Thanks. Thank for you listening. very much. Thank you.